um so yesterday we uh, kind of seen the importance of reporting and how a uh, data analyst has to play a role apart from uh, not only creating reports just to understand the data just to make sure the data is clean and then interpret that data in terms of multiple reports multiple visuals or the key performance indicators the kpis which will help uh, business to uh, solve their needs if there is any uh, deficiency in business if there is any lag in business where where is it uh, how it can be improved so that all basic understanding we have seen in yesterday's session and we also seen few comparisons between power bi and some other uh, business intelligence tools or reporting tools why only power bi why not other tools now um, i kind of requested uh, many of you to download the power bi from the power bi website uh, so if i help you out there are two different ways to download one this is the best way the best way in the sense you can simply type uh, power bi desktop download and the very first website the very first link which you get you can simply go here click on download you'll get the options so either of them is perfect you can go with first one or you can go with second one any one would work so there isn't much difference between both of them uh, now the thing is uh, apart from windows how many of you use mac how many of you use mac intos in your or how many of you have your apple laptops or apple uh, devices so that now it is very difficult for apple we or power bi is purely not supported for apple devices i'm not sure how many of you folks are there if any one of you are there uh, please raise your hand so that i can help you out how can you make sure this power bi is available in your apple laptops also okay it seems no one is there if you have your windows there are two different ways to download now the way the one time or one way is you can simply type go to the store microsoft store you get an option here once you go to store you can download the power bi desktop from here now how do we do that simply type power bi desktop it will navigate to there click on install now this is the second way now second way in the sense if people uh, i guess this store window store option was available from windows 8 now it was available from windows 8 i am not sure if any one of you are using any outdated windows i only have uh, options to get this be downloaded on windows 8 windows 10 and windows 11 that's it any one of you who are using the outdated windows like windows 7 your home basic your professional windows 7 was more a kind of uh, a secured windows but still uh, the thing is they have the microsoft people have uh, given i mean they have stopped giving support to the windows 7 so i'm not sure how many of you folks are using windows 7 or not but from windows 8 you'll get this store option windows 8 maybe windows 10 or maybe windows 11 this store option is available so the two ways to download is either you can go to any browser search power bi desktop download the first link which it opens it will navigate to the microsoft downloads only or else the best option which you get is to go to the windows store uh, simply type power bi and it will navigate you to this page so either you can install it from here both of them would work now recommendation is do not download both versions no both versions in the sense store versus normal download normal download means which includes a browser search and a download do not download both the things same at a time now it will create a confusion because it will i mean you will have two different apps in your system now it is very difficult to understand which was downloaded from store and which is normally downloaded from a browser because both of them would work same the icons will remain same there is a very slight difference now that slight difference is also very difficult to understand every time maybe one time you are creating a report in uh, the application which you have downloaded from windows store and one time you are creating a report from the normal application which you have downloaded from browser so recommended is either go with store or go with normal browser download 
If you're not used to getting to the store, download it via browser and simply use it. Do not touch the store. But people, I have seen people who are using store, Windows store, um, who usually download applications from there only. If that is the case, simply go to store and you can download it. Now you, as I've said, there are options available here in the store itself. Now, once you download, this will open this way. Now, the first thing it will ask you is to get you a login. Now, login is not required. You can see I have logged in here. This is not at all required for the very first instance or maybe for a few days. Few days in the sense for next one week or so. Once the one week sessions are completed from KSR's end, we would be giving you an official email ID. Now, this is uh, an official email ID um, at the rate KSR Consultant Services. For now, this is not required for first six days, for first seven days. Once you are getting used to this Power BI desktop, now in order to download some additional visuals, now how what additional visuals are um, in order to publish this report, you need to have this login. Now with this login, this is a commercial or a company login. Now if you, you can see here, the KSR Consulting Services, this is a company login. So we would be giving you an official company login. Um, so you can utilize that login. Uh, you would be given or you would be activated a pro and premium account boot together in the, with the same email ID. Now, once you get this credentials, then only I would recommend to use the KSR email ID to get it logged in. Now, if you're logged, I mean, if you're opening this Power BI desktop for the very first time, recommended is keep it as it is. Even if you don't log in, uh, unit title, it will come here. Let it be. Um, once the desktop page is open, this is the ideal Power BI desktop page. Now, for the people who already know Power BI, this might get uh, a kind of boring, but let's make it interesting that there are many features in this desktop version also, which many people you might know or many people you might don't even know also. Now, that all features we are going to discover. Now, yesterday, um, just a moment. Somewhere I've given you, somewhere I've given you, let me open this. Were you able to guess this? Um, at this point, at this point, we had a question that with this table, I was able to interpret these kind of uh, visuals. Now, were you able to guess what was the growth uh, in sales or what is the difference of growth? from iPhone and Samsung. The change is 5,000. This is 230,000 and this is 235,000. I want this change to be in percentage. Was anyone able to guess what would be the formula here? Anyone able to guess what is the formula here? You can give it a try because for a data analyst, formula plays an important role. If you're good in formulas, you are leader. You, you can you yourself can assume that you are a leader in data analyst. Yeah, we have to calculate yeah. total I'm sales good. by iPhone sale into 100. Okay, let us do that. Um, I'll use a calculator. See, my question is pretty straightforward. The question is, um, I want the difference of sales from iPhone and Samsung. I am least bothered about OnePlus. I am least bothered about Vivo. So the question, uh, I mean, you said uh, we need to calculate the total sales first. Let us do that total sales. 2,30,000 plus 2,35,000 plus 5,000 plus 27,000. This is the total sales. We will note it down somewhere. Um, let me get this notepad here. Total sales, all phones. I'll keep it as all mobiles. It's 5,47,000. Yeah, any, any, now I'll show back the pick again. What should be done here? Divided by 23. Excuse me, less. sir. You just wanted to know the percentage of difference between yep. these two phones. Yep. 
then the difference that is 235 minus 230 divided by 230 into 100 you get 2.17 okay we'll do that 235 2 lakh 35000 minus 2 lakh 30000 now what this will be getting this is 5000 divided by the original by 2 lakh 30 the least okay divided by the least this is what i get into into 100, 100. Yeah. How many of you are uh, good with this? I mean, uh, the way of calculation is correct, but how many of you think this is the right answer? Yeah. How many of you think this is the right answer? And uh, ma'am, your good name, uh, one who has... Sorry, sir. Today is my first class. Yesterday's oh, class, okay. I could not attend. I'm Ravali. I don't hey. even know your name, sir. May I know your hey, name? Hey, Ravali. Yeah. Myself, Ritesh. Oh, okay. Hi, sir. Okay. Okay. So... The approach which Ravali has used, this is the very right, this is a very correct approach. Now, what she has done, I only want a difference of percentage between iPhone and Samsung and I'm least bothered about OnePlus and Vivo. So total sales, that is not required. The importance is we need to get the difference of sales first because that will help us what would be the percentage of calculation we need to do now once we get the difference we are going to the least now there are two approaches the approach one is approach one is what she has used difference of sales difference of sales once difference of sales is done she is going back to the least sales product then she is multiplying it by 100 now 100 is used for percentage now, this is one approach. This might look easier. Why? Because there are only three steps. Now, the second approach is, first, we have to find difference. It will remain same here, difference of sales. Once this is done, the second approach is, we have to find average of two figures, now, average of two products. What is the average? The answer we are getting is 2.17. With this 2.17, I found the difference, which is around 5,000 here. Um, I'll keep this this way. Answer is 2.17. Least sales product is 2,30,000. And percentages in 200. This works in 200. Whereas the second approach, I am doing the percentage. Sorry, I'm calculating the difference of sales. Second thing is we need to find average of both the products. Now, average of both the products means we need to take addition of both the sales, average of products, which we are comparing. Now, in that case, it would be 2,30,000 plus 2,35,000. This is average. How do we calculate average? How do we calculate average? Normal mathematical them. formula. Divided by? By number of number products. Number of products. Cool. Okay. It would be divided by number of products. What we will be getting here? 2 lakh 30. If I divide it, probably it would be around 2 lakh 32 or something. 2 lakh 30,000 plus 2 lakh 35,000 divided by 2. Yeah, 2 lakh 32,500. This is what we are getting. Now, the third step is, again, we need to find percentage, which is in 200. Now, this is purely in 200. Now, if I do that, 5,000 is our difference. I am dividing it by average of numbers. That is, what was the average? 2 lakh? 32,500. Yeah, 32,500. 2 lakh 32,500 into 100. This is the very, very right approach. Okay, even her answer is correct. But if if you want a very accurate results, this is the perfect answer. 2.15. 2.17 is also valid. There is a slight change in decimal. But if you want accurate answer, this is the correct answer. What I have done is, almost every step is same. The second step, I have split it into two parts. First, what I've done, I have used an addition of both the products and then I'm dividing it by number of products. 
I'm only comparing two products. That is why I'm only uh, calculating the average of two products. That is why I'm taking two. Now, this is what I'm getting the average. If I do the same calculation, difference of sales by average of product in 200, this is the right approach. Now, how many of you think you cannot do this? Because a data analyst has to think this way. You have to be very, very good in formulas. Only reporting will not help us or maybe that will not solve the problem that will not solve the use case of an end user who is expecting you to be good in understanding the data as well as helping him that this is where you are lagging out. If you simply create a report and give it to him, no, he will not be that satisfied. Maybe that will be suffice. That will suffice his requirement. But if you are good in calculations, if you are good in formulas and you do some calculations and give him the results, the end user, the person who is expecting you to create a report, that person would be more than satisfied. Why? Because you are giving him some additional info as well. Now, this is the percentage difference of sales between two products. 2.15% more sales have been done or Samsung is kind of 2.15% more as compared to iPhone total sales. The visualization analogy is only not reporting, but to understand that data and give some additional calculations. Now, if you do it in Power BI, maybe we will be touch basing this in Power BI. How do we do it with the help of visual also? This is a simple calculation. Yeah, probably it will look uh, kind of difficult if you're doing it for very first time. But this is very simple calculation for any product difference, for any product difference. If you're comparing two products, if you're comparing any two entities, you want a difference. What is the percentage difference between both the sales, both the revenues? This is the right way. Either you can use least sales or else you can use with the average of both the products. Average will give you the accurate result. This is also accurate, but the decimal is slight change 0.02. This is the slight change in decimal. Now for a normal person who is, I mean, who doesn't know all this calculation for him, this is also same for him. This is also same, but if you're working on any banking project, the decimals has to be correct up to place five. If you're working in any banking related project up to five decimals, the information has to be very accurate. So I would recommend as if you're working in all the banking projects only, your answer has to be accurate up to four or up to five decimals. I'll keep it as only four. That means two point, if the answer is 2.1515, somewhere it has to be accurate till this. After this, you can take any random digit. If you're getting the calculation, any random digit is possible here. But up to four decimals, your answer has to be very accurate. Now, this is a simple calculation. Let's come back to the Power BI. Now, this is the basic page of Power BI. Now, if I take this pick also, uh, somewhere I've taken it. Let me scroll it down. Yeah, this is what it looked like. Let me take a snap of it. Now, the one who have downloaded Power BI and who are not able to see the Visualization pane, this visualization pane, this data pane towards right. Because um, Power BI always comes, the Microsoft always comes with some latest updates. Not every time um, the visuals are somewhere available towards right. For few of you folks, the visualization tab would be somewhere available in the rightmost uppermost corner. Now, let us first understand what every entity here means. Now, if I take an example, now if you see this visual or if you see this interpretation, whatever is available in this above bar, whichever is available in this section, this section is called as ribbon bar. Ribbon. Ribbon means whatever is available in this option, in these options, this section is called as ribbon bar. Um, you get home tab, you get insert tab, you get modeling, view, optimize, help tab, as well as a file tab here. Now, what does this file tab means? It is simply save your report. 
now for the few folks who are not getting visualization pain here data pain here somewhere it is available in the ribbon bar towards the rightmost or uppermost corner of right the only way to make it this way is let's go to file click on options and settings go to options it will open a new tab ritesh hmm go ahead why it's required to oh, shift it to right side from cool up, i uh, i'll explain i'll explain that now once you open this option tab go to the preview features see somewhere you will get an option here um visualization is there new pane i guess that option is not visible for me you will get an option new visual or new pane you have to disable that spark lines is there auto recovery let me see if there are any more options this is the new update in the power bi right that is the new update in power bi now Go whatever updates today. whatever updates you get in power, power bi now update power. means the only changes ui is changed whereas all other parts will remain same now why i am recommending uh, to go back or switch back to the old uh, i am not saying it is old version old view version will remain updated version will remain the latest version only the view will be same as a previous view why am i saying is see if you use your visualization tab here if you use a data type here the best thing if you are very new to power bi you will get used to visualization and data very quickly if these tabs are available independently towards right if at all a visualization is available somewhere here it will create a confusion the ui is or understanding of information would be very difficult because only few visuals are available here no few in the sense if you click a drop down option here you will get all the visuals visible there but if in case a visualization tab is towards right all the visuals would be clearly available now clearly means these are all default visuals uh, why am i saying go to options go to preview and uncheck that new tab because i would always recommend to learn power bi when visualization and data tab are towards rightmost corner you get a separate individual tab easier to understand easier to grasp if these tabs are available somewhere in the ribbon bar very difficult to grasp that is why i am recommending if you go back to the previous view that doesn't mean you are degrading uh, to the previous version version will remain same only the ui will affect the view of visualization and data will come back to the previous that is the only change your version is still updated version if i go back here i want to see which version am i using go to file go to option maybe you'll get an option about here see it's a june 2023 version probably after june 2023 also there are many versions there are many updated versions available you can download any of them i am not recommending to degrade your version only changes go back to the previous view or this is the ideal view we have a visualization view here we have a data view here ritesh i just downloaded it right before the class and uh, it's a december 2023 version and it's on the right side only just like the ratio cool for few of you folks maybe this uh, option is somewhere uh, available here i'm not saying for everyone for few of them this would be going upward in the ribbon bar now in that case only i have explained if at all it is available towards right then there is no problem no need no need to think now once this is the ideal view which you get um, we have seen ribbon bar anything which is available in this uh, vertical uh, ribbon bar the complete vertical ribbon bar this is what the ribbon bar is called as you have a visualization tab you have a data tab towards right and you also have a filters tab towards right now we will be seeing what all these tabs are uh, today as a initial understanding now if i go to power bi see this all the tabs you can minimize and maximize now if i uh, maximize it sorry yeah, to interrupt you uh, but we download this so by default it it will be up, uh, will download the latest version right 
yeah how yeah. come you know, yeah that's what i meant yeah you would be automatically downloaded yeah. the latest version okay, and so we- even if you have downloaded power bi 6 months back and you are opening it now somewhere it will uh, open a pop up here that you are using older version please update it to new version if you simply click on this it would be automatically updated in the background okay so whichever version november december anything after june that is all fine there won't be any problem okay. yeah ritesh even showing in your laptop also left update available click to download mm mm-hmm. yeah update available click to download also i would recommend to download that update also if in case this tabs are going upwards then only you can go to that options preview features and uncheck that option uncheck the new uh, version or new sorry uncheck the new view option new view means your visualization and data view will go upwards in the ribbon bar if you uncheck that it will come back to the older position that is towards right now you can minimize maximize any of this tab now let us see how many default visuals are available somewhere yesterday in our yesterday session we have seen that there are almost 30 plus default visuals now if i give it a try 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is 7 2 3 4 5 6 now let us do these are 6 these are 6 6 into 6 is 36 visuals and in the last row that is seventh row we have plus four visuals around 40 default visuals probably around 40 default visuals are available as of now in the latest version of power bi 40 default visuals now you will have a question that if i go back to the power bi again do we really use all of these um except r except python and few key influencer visuals now what do you mean by key influencer see there are few visuals which are related to key influence these are more a kind of um ai related visuals or more a kind of purely data science related visuals now that option is also available if i am in the home tab see in the home tab you will not get what all visuals are available here you get an option called as new visual or more visuals now let me see there are few tabs available if i only click go back to the next tab which is insert tab see here you'll get an option called as ai visuals q and a key influencers decomposition tree smart narrative and a combination of r and py which is also used by artificial intelligence or probably which are used by data scientists so these visuals are more more or less they are not uh, frequently used we will see few examples related to ai visuals maybe once we are good with the default or the uh, visuals which are used on frequent basis there are many other visuals available first we are going to touch base each individual visual then we are be we'll then at the end probably at the end once you are get uh, once you get uh, good used to this power bi we would be using this ai visuals for few of the examples these are purely ai based these are purely used or very rarely used uh, as i've said these are most kindly used for nlp natural language processing related information you want to showcase it to the end user there you can use these visuals but default if i am going back to the home tab um the default visuals are up till here till the matrix now there are few more visuals which are recent i mean these are updated in the recent updates metric preview paginated report now this is also present since long uh, card this is a new card visual now what all individual means uh, individual visual means we are going to see that this is a new map visual we also have an option to integrate few power apps and power automate information also now what do you mean by power app and power automate these are two independent tools um, one who are used to power platform environment this is a separate entity power app and power platform is a separate entity which is a part and parcel of microsoft power platform entity or power platform product there you can use these products for creating multiple applications now this is some not related to purely a power bi but if you have created a power app you can integrate that power app in power bi also now there are many default visuals now if you see here 
um let us first differentiate i have given you an idea about ribbon bar i have given you idea about filters visualizations and data let us come back to the our mathematical information how many of you know what do you mean by x axis and y axis how many of you know what do you mean by x and y axis as a graphical representation in power bi it's like vertical x axis is horizontal and y axis is vertical okay x axis is horizontal and y axis is vertical yeah what do you mean by horizontal and vertical horizontal vertical is a hmm? the columns and rows cool it is in terms of sql okay now what do you mean by horizontal this is horizontal yeah and this is vertical yes sir. am i right okay yeah this is horizontal which is going from left to right vertical is which is going from up to down or maybe down to up straight line uh, a kind of straight line standing line standing lines are more a kind of vertical and sleeping lines or probably line which goes from left to right is called as horizontal now in case of x and y uh, i am going back to your schooling days this is x axis which is going from left to right and which is going from top to down or bottom to uh, up which is called as y axis no you have to understand what do you mean by x what do you mean by y the graphical representation why because almost many of the charts are x and y axis related charts you will also get some additional y axis charts secondary y axis also available secondary y axis in few of the visuals in few of the power bi visuals secondary y axis is also available now why am i going back to your schooling days is that is where if you are going back if you understand what do you mean by x and y then only it is very easier to understand what this individual visuals are trying to convey us now if i take a default visual which is the first visual which is a bar chart i am taking this bar chart in this bar chart you will always get y axis you will always get x axis um now once this is done let me take few other visuals here this is for bar chart now how would you assume this is this visual if you click on that visual it is highlighted here now if i again click on white space i am taking some random visual here you will see there are two different y axis column y axis and line y axis this is called a secondary y axis one of them is secondary one of them is primary now if i again take some other visual let me take it in white space i'll get some other visual this is line chart here it is clearly mentioned x axis y axis and secondary y axis now what do you mean by that just a moment now in terms of power bi this is what a visual everything look alike even though this is a box but in a box somewhere you will get something like this which is going horizontally is x which is going vertically is y now you will have a question that where do we get the secondary y axis we have a right side window uh, open which is purely not used as of now this is called as secondary y axis this is secondary y axis there are few visuals which uses both the y axis towards left towards right ideally this is the right approach but if at all there is a requirement that i want to showcase multiple things in y axis in that case you can always activate y axis that is not available in all the visuals only few visuals are there we are going to touch base that visual but this is secondary y axis this is primary y axis this is only one x axis now there are few visuals which interchange the position also that means somewhere it will look like this this is also possible now how many of you sir, know where yeah, do we use such scenarios sir, where you have two yeah. y axis okay now in case um, maybe once i reach to that visual in detail you will get an idea but to answer this um, this is ear we want, we are pulling some ear information in the x axis we are pulling some sales information in the y axis and in the same chart we are also pulling profit 
secondary y axis here is profit okay because we get profit from the sales only yes. more the sales more would be the profit there would be two different lines available for y axis now this is the ideal answer maybe we will touch base one of the visual there you will get more idea but in simple terms you can yes. use year i mean profit also can be also calculated by year and sales can be also calculated by year now how many of you know what do you mean by quadrants in graph these are the quadrants this is quadrant 1 quadrant 2 quadrant 3 quadrant 4 now you will have a question that why only this way why not this way or why not start from one here two here three here four here no that is not valid always quadrant 1 starts from here which is high high now we will touch base that but you have to understand quadrant always starts from right uppermost corner that is 1 2 3 4 there are few visuals which look like this also now i am going to the deep of graphical representation because this will help us understand every individual visual easily if you simply drag and drop everyone can do with your youtube videos everyone can do i can drag and drop all the visuals i can dra drag and drop all the values to the x and y axis but what is x axis what is y axis what is secondary y axis where should we use that that we have to first understand now we have seen few visuals where we do have secondary y axis or where we do have multiple y axis column axis and line y axis we will touch base that now let me delete these visuals now which visual you are using if you simply click on that that would be highlighted here in the visualization pane now you will have a question that can i interchange the same visual with the same values yes if you simply change the visual this is automatically updated to this visual i was using a line chart this was i mean this is upgraded to the area chart even if you have values that will be automatically updated to the area chart now that is the beauty of power bi without taking an additional visual and pulling that data columns here again if you simply change the visual automatically the columns would be adjusted there the data would be adjusted there and this feature is also available in all other um, reporting tools yes all other reporting tools also work similar way but why only power bi we have seen few more differences default there are many visuals available here now apart from these 40 visuals we have around 40 visuals you will have a question that i have said there are more than 100 visuals available in power bi yes you can do that you have an option called as get more visuals if you simply click on this or hover on this three dots you get an option called as get more visuals now here you will have an option get more visual import a visual from a file power bi also supports externally created visuals there are many teams there are many companies which are working on creating their own individual visuals you can download it from your browser and import that visual there is an extension available for that visual dot pbix related or dot pbi related visuals or bi interface visuals you can download it and you can import it to the power bi that are all third party visuals now you will have an option called as get more visual if i simply click on this see you are getting an option to download many visuals here if you combine that 40 and somewhere around 100 options are available or more than 100 see i'm scrolling it down now if i click on organization if you are working for a particular organization and that organization has approved few visuals that will come here now for ksr we have haven't approved any random visual or maybe we haven't developed any individual visual as of now if you go to app source visual and all visuals both are same why because in organizational there isn't any visual to showcase um if you were working for a microsoft there are few visuals where microsoft have certified them where microsoft team has individually developed them which is not defaultly available in this pane but they are kept in the organizational visual tab now see there are some multiple options here how do i check or how do i click or how do i i mean if i am interested to get that visual there are few options here one is blue tick 
one of the visual is not i mean there isn't any tick mark for it now it is always recommended to use a visual which has a tick mark why because this is a certified visual this is certified by microsoft this is certified by power bi team that this visual is working fine you can use it you will get an option for most of them this blue tick no you can see this sanke chat is a product of microsoft only they microsoft people have themselves developed it power bi kpi metrics microsoft only chiclet slicer microsoft only timeline slicer microsoft your gantt chat microsoft world cloud microsoft now you'll have a question that why they are not getting these visuals here because that visuals are of no use on daily basis that is the reason they have kept these visuals in the get more visuals tab now if i wanted to get this chiclet slicer visual i'll simply click on this it will load that data see it it is giving some additional information what rating it has now rating means individuals who have who are using this visual you can you yourself can give a rating also um what this visual is about you can go to overview um somewhere it will give you some idea with this pics you can get an idea it will look like this if you want to add this visual either you can download a sample or else simply click on add now once you click on add it will take few seconds to load that visual in your visualization pane this would be automatically available in the power bi yep import visual successful so visuals which are externally got or which are externally pulled from the get more visual tab are all available after default visuals here now we have a flexibility to take any of the visuals from the online store this is online marketplace power bi marketplace if i want to take a visual which is not even certified by microsoft you can take that visual also i'm recommended is always go with a certified visual but if you think the other visuals are also working fine you can get that visual now we have seen the visualization pane um let us touch base the data tab now in the ribbon bar in the uppermost ribbon bar default is the home tab in the home tab you have an option called as data tab this is the data tab now what do you mean by data tab means i mean if you want to create a report you have to always first get a data getting data is important either it is coming from excel either is it coming from a sql server database there is a option called as dataverse if you are used to power platform you will always get this dataverse option there is an option called as one lake data hub there is an option called as enter data what do you mean by enter data you yourself can create a table you yourself can create columns and enter data manually that flexibility is also available in power bi see i can rewrite the column name if you want to change the table name you can change the table name and click on load it will load that data whatever you have written it will load that data in terms of columns in terms of rows as a separate table now let me click on get data now if i simply click on sql server it will ask me to connect to a specific sql server from where we want to get this data now if i click on get data option yeah um go ahead if you have a question go ahead yes sir sir for you a uh, third tab is one lake data hub right but for me it is data okay both are same data hub it is simply yep. data hub both are same yeah both are same nothing much difference in the latest version maybe you will get some additional icon okay Now, my see, version it is showing 23 december sir can i consider it as latest yes yes it is okay. the latest because okay, you're in sir. january january yeah. updates would be released in february fine sir thank you now you will have a question that only these options are available no if you simply click on get data see many options are there now you will still have a question that i have said there are on around 99 plus data source options available sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. go ahead so do we have any uh, a topic related to excel um, topic related to excel means um, where we would be covering excel insights yeah, yeah. um see if you are enrolling for this course you will default get uh, excel advanced course uh, as an uh, free option you can we have already have a recorded uh, videos for excel uh, you will get that course uh, readily available with this course 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. This is more specifically to data analyst with SQL, Power BI, and Azure. Now, uh, which, hmm? uh, may I know like uh, uh, which version of uh, Excel? Uh, uh, like uh, no, that that with... that you can check with the team. Um, I sorry to interrupt. Why am I saying is? Let me consider this Power BI as the main because Excel we are uh, not covering in this course. If you want some additional insights. uh all the excel related answers would be given once you get that course enrolled no enroll means once you uh, uh once you are into this course you will default get the excel course available advanced excel course not normal excel course uh, there you will so get what type here? of excel yeah. they are using hmm. sir uh, actually what is the main difference between the tableau and the power bi okay so i would recommend to go back and Uh, see yesterday's video. I guess you skipped yesterday's video or yesterday's session. It seems. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so that session is available in uh, YouTube. I'll help you out. If someone has missed a session yesterday, I would always recommend to go back and see yesterday's session. Now, how do I? How do you see that at the end of the session? I'll explain you. Now, coming back to Power BI, um, you'll get an option. Um. no you will have a question somewhere yesterday i have given you an idea there are 99 plus sources available if you simply click on more it will open a new tab see on the all tab if i am scrolling it down you will get all this options around 100 plus options are there you can connect any of them now specifically you wanted to go to fabric see fabric related data sets are available here data flows data marts data warehouse these options are available in fabric if you click on database anything related to database sql server you will have a question my sql my sql is also there postgre sybase ibm db2 all relational databases all non relational databases everything is available here you can even cross connect the data with google you can even cross connect data from aws Amazon Athena is there. Now, if I click on, no, Snowflake is also there. Let me see AWS. Let me see Amazon. See, you can even connect Amazon Redshift data, cross data. That means you'll have a question that can we only connect the Microsoft related data? You no, you can connect even Amazon related data, Amazon Redshift. you can connect your google data also google bigquery google analytics google sheets no google sheet is common this is commonly available but google bigquery is a product of uh, the google cloud so all this products or all this options are available in power bi around 100 plus data sources you can connect now you will always have a question that are we using all of them no depending on what type of project what client you are working with and from where that data is coming in that case most of them are excel most of them are certainly related to database maybe an oracle database maybe a sql server database your ibm db2 database or your mysql even your postgre sql at times if the data is coming from the azure cloud services like azure blob storage azure sql database no these are all random these are all mostly or most probably used options why because from these data sources only we usually get this data you have an option to connect it to big data also hdfs hadoop distributed file system your hive hive related data your spark related data many options are there now if you want to connect it to the online data also i'll go back to the online service i'll scroll it up sharepoint data is available so there are many many options if you want to connect it to the website let us search web see you can connect it to the website also the online website now let us take a random excel workbook i'll simply click on excel once you click on this data set click on connect it will open few options let me get some data here i'm trying to see where this data is located let us take some interesting data set 
now this is what the uh, movies data set i have a data set in excel which is called as a movies data set so i'm trying to load this this i have opened it in excel at my end i'll go back to power bi again i'll open this data set now once i click in this open it will open a tab here now why am i able to see all this options is if i go to this excel sheet i have multiple sheets available in the same excel i have multiple sheets now one who have joined sql they are used to this database i've used this database for few uh, sql related aspects also now 1 2 3 4 5 five different tables are there in the one single excel or one single excel workbook now that all five tables or that all five sheets are available so if you want all five sheets simply click on all five sheets now for now i don't want all of them i only want movies i am taking this movies if you click on this movies it will preview you what does data look like not all the data is available only few records are there maybe 40 or 50 records are displayed here now what i'll do i'll simply click on load now there is an option called as transform we will get back to that but for now i am simply clicking on load once i click on load the data is available here it will come here it will take some time to load in the data tab that sheet would be available which we have pulled in see for movies it has created a different table and what all columns are present that all columns are coming here if i go back here i have movie id title industry release year studio imdb rating which language is it that information is present that all columns are coming here now you can minimize and maximize it now if i take go back again get data click on excel workbook i'll get that movies data again see i'm going back to the same data set i'm going back to the same data set what i'll do in this case first i'll take movies actor now rather than movies i'm going to take movies actor and i'll simply click on load it will create a new data set here movies actor so even if you are going to the same source but tables are different sheets are different every sheet is individual here that is why it is loaded as a different table now if i minimize and maximize it what all columns are there that you can see now we have seen visualization we have seen data let us understand what do you mean by filter tab now for today we would be seeing the filter tab in detail this is one of the most important tab in power bi and you'll have this option defaultly available for few of you if this filter tab is not visible how to enable it go to view tab in the view home insert modeling view you will get this option in the show panes in the show panes you will get this option enabled this is enabled if i click on this this is disabled for few of you this filtered pane is not available in that case this is disabled if you go to view tab simply click on filter this option would be enabled now what is the importance of this filter tab i'll go back to the home what is the importance of this filter tab see the magic here is i have clicked on the visual i am getting three options here filter on this visual filter on this page filter on all the pages now if i simply click on white space one option is disabled filter on this page and filter on all the pages filter on visual has disabled if i again click on any visual that option would be enabled now filter tab has three options available in power bi filter on a visual unless you click on a visual it will not suggest you filter on this visual see so if i am clicking back on the white space that option is disabled if i click on any of the visual filter on visual would be available now what i'll do is i'll delete the visuals now this is the random visual i've taken that is the first visual which is stacked bar chart what i'll do i'll take few information here 
I'll take in X axis, I'll take release year. And in Y axis, I'll take which movie was released. We have a movie here. Yeah, title is the movie. See, this is not right. If I interchange the position, even this is not right. Why is it so? Because we have to understand what we are trying to interpret. Now, if I simply change it, somewhere it is looking like this. Now, do not focus on visual. Do not focus on what type of data we have. Let us see importance of filter tab. Let us see the importance of filter tab. Now, what I'll do is I'll get an industry here. See, I'm dragging this industry column to the filter on visual. So we have two options. One is Bollywood, one is Hollywood. If I click on Bollywood, only Bollywood related movies are coming here. Default, it was select all. When I have dragged this column, default, it is select all. Even if I don't select, even if I don't select, it is default all only. But if I select one random column, Bollywood, only Bollywood related movies are coming. Only Bollywood related movies are coming. Now, if I uncheck this Bollywood, if I click on Hollywood, only Hollywood related movies are coming here. Now, this is filter on visual only this specific visual is going to change. Now, let me take one more visual. What I will do rather other than dragging and dropping, I'll click on the visual. I'll click control plus C. I'll use control plus V. It has created an additional visual. Now the greatness of power BI is with the same visual. If I skip to some other visual, let me use some other visual. This is area chart or maybe this is line chart. Uh, not looking that great. Let me go to the area chart. No, do not focus on what type of visual am I using? See. What I will do here in this case, I'll delete this filter for this visual. We have a industry filter. If I'm changing it to Bollywood, I can only see Bollywood here. Whereas the other visual is not changing. Why? Because this is filter on a specific visual, not on filter on all the page filter on visual means that specific visual will only change. Now, if I want to filter this visual also, I have to drag and drop the industry here again. Industry in filter on this visual. If I change this, the visual is changing. If you are using this filter on visual option, only that specific visual will change. Now, let us come back to the filter on this page. That means let me remove both the filters on this visual. I will drag and drop industry on this page, not on a visual. Now, if I click on Bollywood, both the visuals will change together. Why? Because this filter is on complete page. This page one, complete page one, this filter is working. Now, if I uncheck Bollywood and if I go to Hollywood, this complete page visuals are changing. There are only two visuals. If there are 15, if there are 20 visuals, all visuals will change. Because this was, this is on complete page. Two options, filter on visual, filter on this page. Now the third option is filter on all the pages. That means a report will never have only one page information. There could be multiple pages. There could be multiple pages. Now in page two, what I will do is I'll drag and drop some uh, another visual. I'll paste the title here and by release here. This is how a visual look like. Now, if I'm using filter on all the pages, what I'll do, I'll drag and drop industry to filter on all the pages. Let me go back to page one. I'll delete this filter on. Okay, this is available in all the pages only. Hmm. Now, if I go back here to the page two, I'm dragging and dropping industry here. Now, if you drag and drop industry on all the pages, that would be default available in this page also. Why? Because all these pages are part and parcel of same report. Now, if I click Bollywood here, both the visuals are changing. Here also, this visual is changing. 
if i uncheck bollywood if i click on hollywood this visual is changing even these visuals are changing you can see only hollywood related movies are coming here this is filter on all the pages now you can take multiple filter criterias there isn't only one filter criteria that means you can take multiple columns i have filtered it by industry if you want to filter it by studio i have dragged and drop studio you can filter it by studio only one movie from 20th fox 20th century fox go ahead can can we use different filters on different pages yep you can use different filters on different pages that should come with filter on this page not on filter on all the pages if you okay. want that filter to be specifically to one page only you can drag and drop to filter on that page if you want that visual to filter it on a visual basis only you can drag and drop to that visual only you have a okay. flexibility to use on visual flexibility to use on a single page or flexibility to use on all the pages of that okay. report okay then filters we have top also can we so an example uh, that we that we are reaching out sir we on the very first day if you go to top uh, maybe you will get it but the one who is new to power bi that is very difficult to understand for yeah, now yeah. we have seen very basic that is basic filtering in filter tab we have an option called as advanced filtering here you will get multiple options now depending on what type of data is it hollywood industry is a varkar or maybe a string data but if i go back here to the release year you will get few more options something different is there here basic filtering is not available now that we are going to touch base that is more a kind of advanced concept the first criteria is to understand what do you mean by filter pane and what what all options are there there are three different filter options filter on visual filter on all pages and filter on a single page so we have touch based the three options filter visualization as well as data tab now once you load that data we are default now if you i mean if you are uh, looking at the left most corner here you have three options report view we are default in this view because see something is highlighted here we are default in this view there is an option called as data view there is an option called as model view now what do you mean by data view if i simply click on data view whatever data is present in a particular table that data is reflected here now if i go back to the movies movies data is reflected here all the movies data is reflected here if you click on any of the column you have multiple options in the ribbon bar what type of data set is it release year is a numerical data set that is number title is a text or a string data set movie id again numerical data set now you will have a question i have clicked on the imdb rating this is text this is looking like a string why is it so because there are few nulls also if i click on this filter option you have an option called as null null is a string data type that is why string can take both numeric as well as character data type that is why it is a text data type it it should be a numerical but there are few nulls null means this is a string that is why it is taking text default text can take numeric as well as character data type now we would be touch basing the data types also once we are yeah. getting used to the complete power bi that means the usefulness of visuals for today we have seen importance of filter what all filter means we have seen how a visualization pane will work we have only seen x axis and y axis now someone has asked me what do you mean by secondary y axis see i will take that in case of x axis i will take release year in case of y axis i will take title how many releases were there in a individual year apart from this i'll also take from which industry see you will get two axis here axis y axis is this one axis and this is secondary axis see if i remove this you will not get an option here whereas if i am dragging and dropping industry see 
some secondary y axis is also coming count of industry this is secondary y axis this is how it look like now this data is not suitable for secondary y axis that is the reason it is not giving you the perfect result but to understand how a secondary y axis works you can drag and drop any specific column which is numerical column and that will interpret the results you will get a secondary y axis towards right most of a visual sir one doubt title is in text format but when we dragging when we drag and drop the title into y axis it was showing count why sir any that we are going to reach sir in the day one only you will get all this it is very difficult to understand that is the question um first understand what we are trying to do why only numeric values coming why only text values coming see if i want to interpret the results in y axis as a if i take release year even this is taking as a count now yes. go back to the basics let us come back to the basics where we have seen this x axis and y axis hmm. this is our graphical representation in x axis i am taking year that means in 2000 uh, let me take a new go back let me take a new page i'll take it in big this is x and this is y y axis and x axis so how many of you recall your schooling days this is somewhere we are keeping year year in x axis is kept year column assume this this is 2010 2012 2014 2016 2016 i want movies released in 2010 that means name of movies name of movies released in 2010 would you take that name of movies here in y assume that you are taking a name of movie as random movie three dates released in 2010 that name will not come it will take it as a count why because in y axis always numerical data is kept always a numerical data is kept even if you drag and drop three dates it will take it as count one why because y axis works in numerical concept you may need not drag and drop any numerical data even if you drag and drop text data that will even still take as a count why because y axis only supports numerical data in this visual in this case if you drag and drop any random movie here again it will take it as count 2 if you drag and drop any movie name it will take it as count 3 numerical data even if it is a text even if it is a varchar data it will still take it as numerical data only that is how a graph works why because x axis will always have text information y axis will always have numerical information that is how a graph works ritesh hmm? is this the case in any graph yes this is case okay. in any graph there are few graphs where interchange is there somewhere x axis will come here here numerical data will come here in case of y axis here text data will come there is okay. an interchange of positions but you cannot take both numerical you cannot take both text either mm -hmm. of them should be text either of them should be numerical okay okay See, thank you text data is supported here also but it is taking as a count of text count of values mm -hmm. present in that text simple okay. term simple mathematics what you take in y axis is always numerical because it should show in some charts no how it exactly. will show it has to be a value yes that yes. is why it is taking it as a numerical data for that reason only i have gone back and made sure that you are good you know what do you mean by x what do you mean by y and yeah. why only in y axis a numerical information is present your schooling grammar will help you solve almost all the questions related to power bi if you are working exactly. as a data analyst all the formulas which we would be using that are all related to your schooling 
now coming back to the power bi importance of filter we have seen now there is one more visual which is similar like filter which is almost similar like filter it acts like a filter but it is not a filter now i will only showcase that what i will do is i'm removing this there is a visual called a slicer i'll get this or i'll simply click this see somewhere our slicer is dragged what i'll do i'll get the industry in the slicer slicer has only one column i mean one option available you can drag and drop industry here now you will have a question both are same this is same this is same if i click this see filter is more a kind of dynamic whereas slicer is a static if i am changing anything in slicer filter is remaining as it is it is not changing now difference of dynamic and static what do you mean by dynamic dynamic means it changes with the change static means it remains as it is now if i change this this is changing this might look as a dynamic but this is of no use case i have clicked bollywood but if i am dragging and dropping industry as a slicer here i only have one option called as bollywood default i have clicked a bollywood so it is not working fine if i click on this only few visuals are there only few options are coming this data is not correct whether whereas this is the right approach is this a right approach no even this is not the right approach if i am clicking a hollywood uh, bollywood option here 18 movies are there 18 different movies are there now you have to understood what we are using uh, there is some option selected let me do that now when we will be reaching to this slicer we will see the difference between the exact slicer and filter here but the importance of slicer is it is somewhere similar like filter option only but the only changes slicers are used for that specific page only not for all the pages whereas in filter you have a flexibility on a complete page on all the pages or on a single visual as well you cannot use slicer for a single visual if there are multiple visuals here what i'll do i'll get this visual in the page 1 i'll get it here see if i'm clicking on slicer both the visuals are changing this will default work on all the pages that means on all the uh, all the visuals on that complete page whereas in case of filter we have a flexibility if you want industry to working to be working on an in, in a specific this visual only drag and drop this will work here only this will work here only now filter is way more powerful than a slicer this is an interview question filter is way more powerful than a normal slicer because slicer has very limited use case they are still used but very limited use case whereas filter is more powerful as compared to slicer we have a flexibility to use on a visual on a page or on all the pages so let me remove this um so we have we are almost on time um for today we have covered which vis filters visuals and data we have seen the importance of these three tabs this is report view this is data view and at the last there is a concept called as model view see i haven't done any modeling for now but default it has taken the modeling why because it is coming from the same data set that is why power bi is smart enough to understand that it is coming from a same data set it has automatically created a relationship with the help of movie id which is present in both the tables now this can be right sometimes this can be wrong sometimes we have to make sure whether is it right or not as a, as a data analyst you have to first understand the data then only touch base this model tab model tab means create relationship between multiple tables 
Now, these three tabs also play an important role, report view, data view, and modeling view or relationship view. Now, if I go back to the report view, you can rename the pages. Simply double click on it. You can rename that page. Whatever name you want, you can rename that page. Sir, one quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, so how we will know whether this particular column is x-axis? Um, Y-axis means count, but we have multiple uh, columns, right? Like a count. So how this we will know this is x-axis? This is y-axis. This is y-axis. Why? If I cl simply click on this title, y-axis is gone. Only x mm -hmm. information is present. This is y-axis. Oh, sorry, this is x-axis. If I drag and drop a title column, that means movie's name column, this is x-axis. Now, sometimes there is interchange of positions. See, the positions has changed. Yeah, but we have multiple columns, right? So. Mm -hmm. How we will no, know? Yeah, multiple columns means from this table we have multiple columns. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, we have to make sure from with this table what we want. I want movies released okay. in a particular year. That is why I am taking this okay. as year. No, so this based will, on the query, they, we this will, will answer you. Yeah, based on the requirement, what okay. the requirement is, it will help us to solve the problem. Okay, sir. Thank you. Now here the positions, I am going back to the bar chart. In the bar chart, the positions has changed. Y axis is coming first and X axis is coming second. Now, what is X axis and what is Y axis here? What is X axis and what is Y axis here? See, X, you can uh, see I this is Y. Of release here and Y is number of movies means. Movies. Okay. See, what I have done is, the graph is same. Still the graph is same. This is what the graph look like. The only change in case of bar chart is bar chart goes from left to right horizontally. Whereas there is a chart called as column chart, which goes from up to down or down to up, which is called as column chart. This is vertically in case of bar chart, X is same here. Y is same here. But in case of X, whereas in case of column chart, X was a text value and Y was a numerical value. In case of bar chart, Y is a text value and X is a numerical value. That is the slight change. Okay. Now for time being, um, we are good with today's understanding. Um, I will show you how to access previous recording the best mode is best ways you can uh, always just, yeah now sorry, sorry to interrupt just yeah, one quick down so to load data no is there a restriction as to number of records or something like in power bi um, because we can take some multiple resources right we can there is a limit now it depends on what type of source you are pulling but default it is fifty thousand rows if you want more than fifty thousand rows you have to break it okay and uh, is there a restriction to column also like no no column there isn't any restriction you can take mm -hmm. n number of mm -hmm. columns but power bi has to sub support means see if a table has around 10000 columns would you mm -hmm. ever think that table will have 10000 columns that is a very rare case yeah for analysis no, either, probably, yeah. Not sure. yeah probably we have to write a query make sure that only that specific columns we are trying to call yeah. But just for the interview sake, I asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can take. We can take. Uh, now there is a limitation of just a moment. There is a limitation of fifty thousand also. That doesn't mean only fifty thousand rows will be coming. You can take more mm -hmm. than fifty thousand also. It depends on what type of source you are using. Yeah, Gauri, go ahead. Even I had the same doubt. Like I was being asked, like how much uh, data, how much uh, GB you have. Uh, worked on like in that way so how much is the maximum level of uh, data we can use in this particular power bi okay now that is very advanced level now if i answer it in simple terms um let me do that see that is more related to your pro and premium license for power bi desktop it is of no use case you can take n number of data in power bi desktop but if you want to publish it if you are using a pro license 
you can publish a report with only one GB data set. And you can publish 10 reports like that. Maximum size of a pro license is 10 GB per user. That means you cannot publish a complete report with complete 10 GB. You have to publish one GB report. Maximum report size, which the data set or report has to be of one GB. And that too, you can publish 10 reports in pro. Whereas in case of premium, there isn't any restriction. If you are one report is going beyond one GB, if at all it is going up to 10 GB also, you can publish it. Maximum size you can publish is 500 TB. Now, in terms of interview, if you were asked how many um, gigabytes of information you have handled, see, my six years of experience states that I haven't seen a report which is going beyond 3 GB also. I'm, I'm, I'm saying 3 GB, even 1 GB is very difficult. A report with 1 GB of data set is also very, very difficult. If at all it is going beyond 1 GB, then you can simply skip to premium. And I have seen organizations, if the data is going beyond 1 GB, that organizations are all high-tech organizations, somewhere like Microsoft, somewhere like uh, Google, somewhere like Apple, these organizations will only have that amount of data. If you're working in any other organization, I have seen that is less than 1 GB only. They will only go with pro license. Why? Because this is more cost effective. Uh, got it. Got it. Thank you, Ritesh. Now, now going back to how do you enroll for this course? Um, I would always recommend to visit our website, our KSR website. This is our KSR website, www.ksrdatavision. Now I'll post it in the notepad. You'll get an idea. www.ksrdatavision.com. Now, once you are logged in, so this is the default page you'll get. This is the home page. Let me open the home page. This is what you get. A pop-up will come. Now, about this course, go to courses. I'll open it as my login. Let me log in first. I'm clicking on sign in. So it is asking me to log in. Once you log in with your email IDs, this is what you get. This is the default page. Now, once you log in, this is the home tab. In the home tab, you'll get an option called as courses. Click on courses. Now you can see here a Power BI course is there. Full stack Power BI. Either you can click here or the best option is you can go back. There is an option in the home tab itself, Power BI enroll. Click on this. This is second option. Now the third option is there is a scroller. There is a scroller going on. You can see a scroller going on. This is for data engineering. This is for Power BI. If I click, uh, even you, you even if you can, you can click on that. You will get. You will be navigated to this. Now you will get an option called as access this course. You have to enroll or access. First, you will get an option for enroll. For first five days, you will get a free lecture. Now once you enroll it, it would be available in your bucket like this. Go to my account. It would be available in your bucket like my courses. It will be available in your bucket like this. Now, once you click on that, so you can see um, the yesterday's recording also. Let me check that class records. See, you can see the yesterday's record. Go to class records. 18th of January, yesterday's uh, record is also present. View recording. On 11th of Jan, we had a demo session that also you can view it. Now, this is one option. The second option is it is published to YouTube. Now, what do you mean by YouTube? YouTube, you already know. Click on YouTube. Once you go to YouTube, you can search KSR Data Vision. Go to our page. See, intro to Power BI, it was published 13, hour, uh, 13 hours back. You can view this recording also, but if at all you're good to enroll for this course, I would always recommend to go via this way. That means via our website. 
you can go to class records once you click on this free preview for five sessions now only two sessions are done this is a demo session now once this session is completed you will get the view recording option for today also yeah any any questions on the concepts which i have covered today or any questions on the concepts let's connect back on monday it's already very too late yeah thank you everyone have a very good day